path dependence explains how the set of decisions one faces for any given circumstance is limited by the decisions one has made in the past, even though past circumstances may no longer be relevant. In economics and the social sciences, path dependence can refer either to outcomes at a single moment in time, or to long-run equilibria of a process. In common usage, the phrase implies either that history matters, a broad concept, or that predictable amplifications of small differences are a disproportionate cause of later circumstances, and, in their strong form, that this historical hangover is inefficient. The first usage, history matters, is trivially true in the explanatory context, everything has causes. And in these fields, the direct influence of earlier states isn't notable. It is the narrow concept that has the most explanatory force and which is covered in this article. Illustration Consider as an example the videotape format war. Two mechanisms independent of product quality could explain how VHS achieved dominance over beta max from a negligible early adoption lead, a network effect. Video cassette rental stores observed more VHS rentals and stocked up on VHS tapes, leading renters to buy VHS players and rent more VHS tapes, until there was complete vendor lock-in. A VCR manufacturer bandwagon effect of switching to VHS production because they expected it to win the standards battle. An alternative analysis is that VHS was better adapted to market demands. Positive feedback mechanisms, like bandwagon and network effects, are at the origin of path dependence. They lead to a reinforcing pattern, in which industries tip towards one or another product design. Uncoordinated standardization can be observed in many other situations. Economics Path dependency theory was originally developed by economists to explain technology adoption processes and industry evolution. The theoretical ideas have had a strong influence on evolutionary economics. There are many models and empirical cases where economic processes do not progress steadily towards some predetermined and unique equilibrium, so that the nature of any equilibrium achieved depends partly on the process of getting there. The outcome of a path-dependent process will often not converge towards a unique equilibrium, but will instead reach one of several equilibria. This dynamic vision of economic evolution is very different from the tradition of neoclassical economics, which in its simplest form assumed that only a single outcome could possibly be reached, regardless of initial conditions or transitory events. With path dependence, both the starting point and accidental events can have significant effects on the ultimate outcome. In each of the following examples it is possible to identify some random events that disrupted the ongoing course, with irreversible consequences. In economic development, it is said that a standard that is first to market can become entrenched. He called this path dependence, and said that inferior standards can persist simply because of the legacy they have built up. That QWERTY versus Dvorak is an example of this phenomenon, has been reasserted, questioned, and continues to be argued. Economic debate continues on the significance of path dependence in determining how standards form. Economists from Adam Smith to Paul Krugman have noted that similar businesses tend to congregate geographically, opening near similar companies, attracts workers with skills in that business which draws in more businesses seeking experienced employees. There may have been no reason to prefer one place to another before the industry developed, but as it concentrates geographically, participants elsewhere are at a disadvantage and will tend to move into the hub, further increasing its relative efficiency. This network effect follows a statistical power law in the idealized case, though negative feedback can occur. Buyers often cluster around sellers, and related businesses frequently form business clusters. So a concentration of producers can trigger the emergence of many dependent businesses in the same region. 
In the 1980s, the US dollar exchange rate appreciated, lowering the world price of tradable goods below the cost of production in many US manufacturers. Some of the factories that closed as a result could later have been operated at a profit after dollar depreciation, but reopening would have been too expensive. This is an example of hysteresis, switching barriers, and irreversibility. If the economy follows adaptive expectations, future inflation is partly determined by past experience with inflation. Since experience determines expected inflation and this is a major determinant of realized inflation, a transitory high rate of unemployment during a recession can lead to a permanently higher unemployment rate because of the skills lost by the unemployed, along with a deterioration of work attitudes. In other words, cyclical unemployment may generate structural unemployment. This structural hysteresis model of the labor market differs from the prediction of a natural unemployment rate or NAIIU, around which cyclical unemployment is said to move without influencing the natural rate itself. Leibowitz and Margolis distinguish types of path dependence. Some do not imply inefficiencies and do not challenge the policy implications of neoclassical economics. Only third-degree path dependence, where switching gains are high, but transition is impractical, involves such a challenge. They argue that such situations should be rare for theoretical reasons, and that no real-world cases of private locked-in inefficiencies exist. Venn and Durand qualify this critique by specifying the conditions under which path dependence theory can be tested empirically. Technically, a path-dependent stochastic process has an asymptotic distribution that evolves as a consequence the process's own history. This is also known as a non-agodic stochastic process. In the theory of the growth of the firm, Edith Penrose analyzed how the growth of a firm both organically and through acquisition is strongly influenced by the experience of its managers and the history of the firm's development. History Recent methodological work in comparative politics and sociology has adapted the concept of path dependence into analyses of political and social phenomena. Path dependence has primarily been used in comparative historical analyses of the development and persistence of institutions. Whether they be social, political, or cultural, there are arguably two types of path-dependent processes. One is the critical juncture framework, most notably utilized by Ruth and David Collier in political science. In the critical juncture, antecedent conditions allow contingent choices that set a specific trajectory of institutional development and consolidation that is difficult to reverse. As in economics, the generic drivers are lock-in, positive feedback, increasing returns, and self-reinforcement. The other path-dependent process deals with reactive sequences where a primary event sets off a temporally linked and causally tight deterministic chain of events that is nearly uninterruptible. These reactive sequences have been used to link the death of Martin Luther King, Jr., with welfare expansion and the Industrial Revolution in England with the development of the steam engine. The critical juncture framework has been used to explain the development and persistence of welfare states, labor incorporation in Latin America, and the variations in economic development between countries, among other things. Scholars such as Kathleen Thelen caution that the historical determinism in path-dependent frameworks is subject to constant disruption from institutional evolution, social sciences. Paul Pearson's influential attempt to rigorously formalize path dependence within political science draws partly on ideas from economics. Hermann Schwartz has questioned those efforts arguing that forces analogous to those identified in the economic literature are not pervasive in the political realm, where the strategic exercise of power give rise to and transform institutions. The path dependence of emergent strategy has been observed in behavioral experiments with individuals and groups. In the social sciences, especially sociology and organizational theory, 
A distinct yet closely related concept to path dependence is the concept of imprinting, which captures how initial environmental conditions leave a persistent mark on organizations and organizational collectives, thus continuing to shape organizational behaviors and outcomes in the long run, even as external environmental conditions change. Other examples A general type of path dependence is a typological vestige. In typography, for example, some customs persist, although the reason for their existence no longer applies, for example, the placement of the period inside a quotation in U.S. spelling. In metal type, pieces of terminal punctuation, such as the comma and period, are comparatively small and delicate placing the full height quotation mark on the outside protected the smaller cast metal sought from damage if the word needed to be moved around within or between lines. This would be done even if the period did not belong to the text being quoted. Evolution is considered by some to be path-dependent. Mutations occurring in the past have had long-term effects on current life forms, some of which may no longer be adaptive to current conditions. For instance, there is a controversy about whether the panda's thumb is a leftover trait or not. In the computer and software markets, legacy systems indicate path dependence. Customers' needs in the present market often include the ability to read data or run programs from past generations of products. Thus, for instance, a customer may need not merely the best available word processor, but rather the best available word processor that can read Microsoft Word files. Such limitations in compatibility contribute to lock-in, and more subtly, to design compromises for independently developed products, if they attempt to be compatible. Also see Embrace, Extend and Extinguish.